In this video, I'm summarizing a SymPy library that I developed for simulating supply chain networks with a sourcing stage and a and warehousing or consumption stage. The structures that can be modeled with this library are um, on the first stage is a set of manufacturers that act as suppliers. These manufacturers produce according to a defined production program. So it is possible to quantify the average daily production output um, and also the associated variability in production. So sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less. And a production program, meaning the percentage of uh, the various different product types that this manufacturer or supplier is producing. And the supplier is then producing onto stock uh, in a push in a push based uh, inventory control logic, and is then used uh, as a supplier by a set of sales units or end warehouses or whatever you want to want to refer to them across consumption warehouses. These uh, let's say sales units face a uh, consumer demand, which is modeled also as a uh, defined distribution with a uh, defined mean daily demand and a defined variability. And they face consumers that uh, enter their stores with defined preferences. So for example, a given consumer might prefer product A, but if product A is not available, the consumer will accept product B. And if product B is not available, maybe this consumer also accepts product D, for example. The sales unit, furthermore, has a purchasing plan, which is then again specified by a, uh, a mean quantity and an associated variability. And according to this purchasing plan, for each iteration of the simulation, the sales unit tries to purchase these products at the associated supplier. If those products are available on stock at the supplier, the supplier um, or the, 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 the products are removed from the inventory of the supplier and transferred into a delivery. And this delivery then arrives at the sales unit after a defined lead time. So in terms of structure, that would be the network structure that we can uh, model with this, including cons customers or consumers with a defined preference, sales units that act as end warehouses in this two-stage distribution chain, and suppliers that produce products in stock. The products themselves have a defined lifetime, so it is possible to model perishable products um, that after a certain period will expire and have to be removed from the inventory. And for this, the suppliers and also the sale units have a defined inventory management that for each period in the simulation checks the inventory, meaning all products in stock, and destroys those products that have exceeded the expiration date. Besides from that, in this library, the default inventory logic is, um, or delivery logic, uh, is first in, first out. So the products produced on stock, the first ones to be produced on stock will also be the first ones to be shipped. And uh, likewise, at the sales unit, the, the oldest products are the ones that are consumed um, in case of a customer are purchasing for consumption. So throughout the supply chain, there is a first in, first out principle. In terms of the, the structure of this project itself, uh, this is a downloadable a zip file that I made available in the shop uh, on my blog. And if you download this zip file, it will contain um, uh, subfolders containing the documentation of this um, of this project, uh, the virtual environment, and uh, the requirements file for uh, the required uh, modules to install in Python. And then there's a framework directory which basically contains the modules uh, for modeling the supply chain. So there's, for example, a demand module for modeling demand patterns and uh, products. There's an inventory module for modeling inventory groups and inventory management. There's a manufacturing module for modeling the supplier and the, the manufacturing process. There's a supply module for, uh, for modeling purchasing plans and uh, 
the, the, the purchasing process, so to say, and there's a warehousing model which uh, basically contains a class for modeling the end warehouses, so the consumption warehouses that purchase from suppliers and uh, face uh, the end consumer. And the main file is just an implementation of this library with an exemplary implementation. In this case, a supply chain with one central manufacturer that supplies seven warehouses. Um, and there's also a configuration file where you can uh, configure this uh, base uh, template. So for example, you can, using this configuration file, adjust the number of warehouses. Um, you can adjust the delivery lead times per uh, end warehouse. Uh, you can adjust the uh, production output at the manufacturer and uh, you can adjust the production program and you can adjust the uh, consumer preferences and the distribution of demand, so to say. And you can also set the length of the simulation run. Here are the main processes um, of the simulation library. The main processes are the production process at all of the manufacturers, so to say the suppliers, and the other one is the warehousing process itself at the consumption warehouse. So, as I explained earlier, the manufacturers produce on stock. So, iteration after iteration, they will produce a defined production program onto stock. And they will also conduct an inventory check. So, all the products that have exceeded their expiration date will be destroyed from stock. And on the other side, we have the end warehouse warehousing process, which basically has uh, various steps. The first step is to check the inventory. If any of the products have exceeded their expiration date, they are scrapped. And after that, the uh, consumption warehouse tries to place a purchasing order at the associated supplier and tries to purchase all of the, the products in the purchasing plan. Whether the purchase is successful or not depends whether the product is on stock. So if a given product is not on stock at the uh, supplier, then the, the respective product is not purchased. And after all of this purchasing has been uh, completed, the, the purchased products are translated into deliveries that are then going to arrive after a specified period of time. And um, the end warehouse checks which deliveries have arrived now at this point in time. Those deliveries are then transferred into inventory, and then um, the, the, the warehousing process checks the uh, demand at this period and tries to satisfy the demand. The demand is represented by uh, consumer preferences, so each entry in the let's say demand register is one consumer with a defined preference, and the preference is descending order. So each consumer has a preference for certain products. And uh, the first product in stock at the consumption warehouse is then consumed for uh, satisfying the demand of this consumer. Another thing to point out is that here at this repurchasing stage where consumption warehouses purchase their products at the supplier, the order in which consumption warehouses are um, processed by the supplier is random. And the same is true for uh, the consumer stage. Okay, then the output of the simulation is a uh, history of all the sales orders at the suppliers and also at the consumption warehouses. And with this data, you can generate a wide range of statistics uh, on your own. Um, of course, it's also possible to customize all of these processes and all of this content. That would then be uh, additional work, which is not included by this download or the product of download or zip file. But of course, customizations can be made in the code. With the data, however, now by default generated by this simulation framework, you can, for example, create uh, timelines over product sales um, for a given supplier, for example, for uh, different product groups. Um, you can make uh, availability reports uh, for example, for the consumption warehouses for for various product groups. You can look at the demand distribution for different products, for example, across all of the end warehouses or for certain groups of end warehouses. You can, for example, check what is the actually fulfilled demand quantity for each product category across all of the consumption warehouses. 
and you can also track the availability of certain crop categories across time. This is just some examples, you can also create many other statistics with this core data. The core data tracks the iteration time, the, the simulation time, so the point in time, the entity, so is, is it a supplier or is it a consumption warehouse, and what's the, what's the name of this facility, so each facility is tracked with this data set. And uh, since these are sales orders, we also register here the preference and the actual product sold and whether the product is available or not. So whether the preference was uh, satisfied. In terms of preferences between the end warehouse and the manufacturing facility, the preference is always the specific product category. So for example, the preference will be product A if this consumption warehouse wants to place a purchasing order for product A. But on the consumption side, the consumers, as I said, can have preference for accepting various product groups. Yeah. So if product A is not available, they might accept product B. And these preferences are tracked here in this data set. So it's also possible to uh, analyze different um, preferences and what the impact is of different preferences on the overall supply chain.